as reparation talks are being stirred up like a mighty storm of what to do about the wickedness that was portrayed on the minorities of this country, on the blacks, especially in the Latins, especially in the Native Americans. And they're trying to figure out where this money coming from. Well, why not the lotto? There are plenty of reasons why we could tax the lotto, one of which we'll get into real quick quickly about how it was created in the black communities and played by the black communities and now mostly black people buy it but only white people get rich so let's dig deeper into this approximately 370 million lottery tickets were sold between saturday and tuesday before the mega million jar drawings According to the lottery official, the U.S. generated nearly 73 billion lottery sales in 2066, according to CNN. Now, you look at the books, even video games, movies, music. We spend more money on the lotto, and as I said before, that's poor people hoping to get something, and the lottery is rigged too. Policy lottery game first played through Chicago's black community. In 1885, three men, a white man named Patsy King, an Asian named King Fu, and a black street hustler uh, named Sam Young introduced the game Policy to Chicago. Policy was an illegal game played in similar ways that the lottery is today. The game was a big part of Chicago's black community. Players tried to guess three numbers from 1 to 78. Now this is what it was created for in the black community and that's still not good enough. No, we're not going to tax this and give this to these people. 40 acres in a mule refers to a promise made the United States for Argerain reformed the former enslaved black farmers by Union General William. Now this was a deal if you worked in um, the, the army, you'd get 40 acres in a mule to people who participate and it never happened. So forget the reparations for all the slavery. What about the deal that you guys made? A lot of African Americans are starting to call for reparations for the many years of stolen labor um, through slavery. Is that something that you would support as president? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think it would be, first of all, it's likely of getting through a Congress is nil. A second of all, I think it would be, you know, very divisive. I think the real issue is when we look at the poverty rate among the African American community, uh, when we look at the high unemployment rate within the African American community, the incarceration rate within the African American community, we have a lot of work to do. So I think what we should be talking about is making massive investments in rebuilding our cities, in creating millions of decent paying jobs, in making public colleges and universities tuition free, and working on childcare. Basically, targeting our federal resources to the areas that is needed the most, and where it is needed the most are in impoverished communities, often African American and Latino. This speaks volumes about the people to suppress us. Because as much as they say they want to help, they really don't. They use our back end, the fact that we don't have nothing, to put these programs that destroy us more in our neighborhood. And everybody should know that Bernie Sittles is a damn devil that doesn't have your heart at hand. Because he wants to set up stuff to fix you, but won't let you do it with yourself. That's all about suppression. It's about subduing. It's about creating the defeat attitude. It's about conquer. And that's what these people are about. Their actions should show you time after time. Because every single time we have a problem, here come these government secret wars on black activists that took place in the 60s. What they did with the Panthers. What they did with everybody that felt like the date was old something it's just like the murder of Malcolm X the United States black genocide refers to genocide or so-called African Americans both past and in the present decades of lynches long-term racial discrimination all this took place and we shouldn't get nothing from it you guys don't believe nothing should take place the Tuskegee study on untreated syphilis in the Negro male was an infamous and unethical clinical study conducted between 1932 and 1972. And they were saying they was giving them free health care. That's what they used to inject us with syphilis and even tell it what it was. So it's not bad enough that we have to build this country. And then when we start to get free, they shut 
down our cities that we have this thriving because this man wants you to have nothing and there's nothing in his heart this justice or justified because he would say you know what we owe these people for all the torture for all the free work for everything we have done to this people but the lord will pay the Lord will pay back and they gonna have to play with their blood. They gonna have to play with their soul. They gonna have to play with their children as we did, you know? So let's talk about the pitfalls of this reparations. If they trying to put some type of stipulation on the reparation, stating that if you get this money, then what you have to do is say that all is forgiven that America has done to you. That is a deal with the devil, literally. So you are gonna wanna avoid that and watch your step. Because if they try to give you something like that, it's gonna be to destroy you. Cause we all know that poverty that we're living in now is making anybody that's wise angry. So that's one of the pitfalls. That's one of the pitfalls of getting a gift that destroys your heart. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking who he may devour. And there's some, some things that I have to really just get off my chest on this, because I feel like it's going to destroy so many people, because truly oppression make a wise man mad, and a gift destroys the heart. So how are you going to tell people, oh, this man's the devil that just gave you $150,000 and giving you $4,000 a month, or whatever the case may be? If the devil isn't trying to trip you up, it's because he already got you. Now, every so often we start waking up, we start getting on our feet, and he comes at us again. And that's what's going on. So you have to be really careful in the coming years. The devil doesn't care if you go to church or read your Bible as long as you don't apply it to your life. So you can read all the scriptures you want. If you're if you're doing uh, faith without works, then everything you're doing is a failure. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So don't deceive yourself into thinking that this man who has hated you for thousands of years is all of a sudden going to want to do something for you with nothing in return. It don't work like that with the devil. All praises to the Most High.